<laughs> Welcome to the new GN lab. It's, it's a little bit of a mess right now, but we have a lot of... It's, it needs some work. Hey everyone, so we have a different video today. This is an important one because we're going to be talking about what some of our goals are and some major changes for Gamers and Access going forward. Those changes all basically solidify what we're already doing. And we've grown a lot over the last year, haven't had one of these types of talks in a little while. So I think it's time to do something that just make sure we're all on the same page for what we're trying to do. And if you're new here, it'll give you a better feel for who's running the show, what, what we are behind the scenes. Before that, this video is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace for our own GN store and juggle complex multi-piece orders all the time with it. Squarespace makes it fast for us to roll out new products with detailed pages full of galleries, videos, and descriptors. It's also useful for your own resume sites, for photographer or project portfolios, or for starting your new small business idea. There's never been a better time to try and start your new business than right now and we can vouch that Squarespace makes it easy. Visit squarespace.com slash gamersnexus to get 10% off your first purchase with Squarespace. So the major news, and what I'll talk about in here a little bit, is that we've gotten a new space, we will be moving, and it's a really major move for us. This is going to allow us to get some pretty crazy testing equipment that I wanted for a long time, but back at the house, obviously that wasn't feasible to get it there, and even in this location, we just we don't have the space for the equipment that I'm really interested in. Uh, and there's some really innovative stuff we can do. We can genuinely start pushing the technical testing side of the computer reviews industry forward in a way that, to my knowledge, no one's done. Uh, there's a lot of really good testing in the industry. There are a lot of people who know a hell of a lot more than I do and work in computer reviews. But there are certain things that we haven't seen introduced yet. And we'd like to bring some of that to the space and add our own flair to it. Uh, to do something unique and, and kind of, it's just, it's what I want to do. I think it's fun to play around with cool new testing approaches. So that's one thing we wanted to get this space for. So in terms of how we sort of treat and approach reviews and things like that, it hasn't changed. Those of you who have been with us a long time know this at this point, but uh, we are genuinely very consumer focused and viewer focused because the way I look at it when I'm reviewing a product or when Patrick's the same way, Patrick Stone's the same way, Andrew, Keegan, Mike, everybody on the team, and then on the news side, Eric, and then Ryan on sort of some of the operation sides of things. Everybody has the same ethos, and I, I really come to appreciate that and how everybody treats the reviews process because it is, this is a business, but we treat it a lot less like a business than it probably should. We'd make a lot more money if we treated it more like a business um, because everybody kind of, when we get something in and we look at it and it's garbage, Patrick will rant to me about how it's garbage and we'll figure out what's the best way we can really get this out there, compact it into a video that a lot of people will see so that we can make sure everyone knows it sucks and not to waste their money on it. Because at the end of the day, the way we look at the reviews process as a whole team is pretty simple. I don't care about protecting the interests of uh, a company or of my relationship with the company and that's especially true now that we have basically built this operation on the store, on store.cameraxis.net. Thank you to those of you who bought mod mats, especially that's more or less funded our growth the last few years, uh, and on Patreon. But either way, we don't care too much about the interests of the companies because of one thing. And that one thing is that when you really, you stop and you think about it, it's like this, let's just pretend it's a case. This case is a terrible case, but it's, it's just another case for the company that's made it. At the end of the day, it's not a big deal for them. But for the person who builds a computer once every three to five years or whatever, however frequently you build it, you're going to be stuck with this thing, not only looking at it, but dealing with whatever side effects it has for potentially years. And for a lot of people, that means saving money, which means working a lot of hard hours. And when we review a product, what I'm always reminded of is just how many hours would someone have to put in at a job of any kind to justify purchasing this product. And if you start thinking about it and you're like, this could easily be 100 hours of work for someone to buy this video card. Uh, is it really that good? Does it, when you start factoring the human cost of what you're selling, your time to get this thing, is it really worth it? You know, and likewise, when we see stuff that's really good, we wanna make sure everyone knows it's good 
and we want to elevate those things. So uh, if there's a really good case with high airflow, good thermals, all that stuff, or there's a really good video card board partner design, it's our goal to make sure people understand that's a good product, but not only that, but why. That way when you're buying something later on, you'll know what to actually look for. So that's how we still look at things. It's always been that way and we're keeping that. And now we should be able to do a lot more of that. Uh, I'm very happy with our ability to remain as fiercely independent as we are. And we've only been able to expand that over the years as things have grown. And even if you look outside of sort of the direct support from viewers, just the uh, AdSense scaling on YouTube, which is not something we are a part of that. We're not part of that process. They sell ads to whatever companies that aren't really involved in our space. And that supports things a lot more than it used to as well. So we're able to expand is what I'm getting at and keep our approach to things, which is good because it's just, I, I really like being able to, to grow in a way, I was always afraid of this as we grew. It's, it was really scary to move into this space uh, and I'm not that scared about moving again because now I know what the process is like. But the reason it was scary to move into this space is because it was we were looking at it as I'm adding this cost and you're kind of worried that you might have to sacrifice some of your uh, morals or some of your objectives in how you review products or do things and, and make things just maybe more mainstream to use uh, a sort of bland word. And that was something I was really worried about, but you know, we've gotten a hell of a lot more complicated and technical over the last years. We've added pressure testing, we've added flatness testing, we have added dummy heaters that were used in thermal interface testing. We were never able to do that stuff before. And we've been doing power supply testing lately by exploding power supplies that we think are dangerous to have in your build. And that's coming soon. We're still doing some endurance testing on that, more on that today too. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff we've expanded. and. It hasn't come at the sacrifice of anything really, other than time. Other than I'm, I'm still putting as many hours in as I always have been. But uh, I like it. This is this is my life at this point, so I really enjoy it, and this is what I want to spend my my money and my time on. So we've been in this space for three years now, and I generally make it a rule to first of all, I, I try to not use first person pronouns. So we're using that a lot today, uh, and. Generally make it a rule to not really talk about anything personal almost ever on the channel. I'll, I'll throw opinions in every now and then, things like that, but not really something I like doing or think is important for the channel. But for videos like this, uh, it adds a little bit of, uh, I think, important background information. We did this a couple years ago and we did the moving vlogs too, so some of you already know this stuff coming up. But before this space, we worked out of my house, or technically my mom's house, and a couple years before that, uh, I had basically made a commitment to make the make the business work and also keep it to what I wanted it to do. So that would be focusing on reviews and not doing like unboxings or doing uh, marketing videos, things like that. We were I was always really wanted to do that. I wasn't making any money at the time, so I had this big ambition. I wanted to keep doing exactly what I was doing and uh, also make it work and, and make enough money to grow the team and do more with the operation. So that was the commitment I made about a couple of years before we moved. And I made that commitment, as many of you know from the first moving vlog, because uh, at the time my dad unexpectedly passed away. He really believed in what I was doing and I committed that I would support uh, the rest of the family with the business. And so that's sort of, uh, that's what became this. And I don't want to change the way we're doing it because uh, that's, that's the way he knew I was doing it. So we're going to keep doing it this way uh, until I can't do it anymore, basically. So then, the stuff that's coming up, it started about 2007, 2008. We moved 2018. Uh, I actually didn't want to move into this location. I'm really glad we did. It opened up a lot of stuff for us, but one of them is liquid nitrogen content. We did all those fun streams of liquid nitrogen. I uh, really enjoyed it. I've learned a lot about how more of that stuff works. And it also opened up the ability to hire a couple more people. Now we're keeping the team really lean. And one of my goals has always been to keep sort of the, the big payments that are recurring. So that would be things like rent or mortgage uh, and then team as small as possible so that we never feel like we're in jeopardy if there's a bad month or something. So we're not forced to start selling our values to make things work. And we've managed to, to keep everything really lean, so that's good. But anyway, we were able to hire Patrick Stone this year. Uh, Keegan is now 
technically he's he's been full time since I don't know one or two years, but technically he's been working with me for almost a decade at this point. Uh, but he came on full time a couple of years ago, and uh, Andrew's here and working. He was at the house. He was technically employee number one, and Patrick is working as well. He does all the case reviews and a lot of the CPU testing stuff like that behind the scenes. And then we've added Mike as well on the uh, cooler testing as a part time person. So we've really expanded here mostly in what we do, but the people who've been added kind of comes down to sort of, well, everyone works with me at the house, but we've officially added two to three people, depending on how you look at their roles when they were at the house. I, I had to schedule everyone so that they weren't there at the same time because there wasn't enough space, but people were there in some capacity. And now it doesn't, we have enough space for the current team. So that's good, but we do need to expand. So the reason I didn't want to move was because I, uh, it's scary to move, like I was saying, and I really liked where we were, but it was really crammed in there. I knew it was limiting our growth potential. I sort of didn't care, but when I started to care was when I noticed that uh, just, so Patrick and Andrew were the ones there every day at that time. And I noticed that it was starting to wear on them and it was fatiguing to be that cramped. And it, it was just not a normal job setup. And so it needed to change if I wanted to keep everyone happy on the team. And that was the goal. But we moved and things are, are a little more professional now, but you know, there's a limit when you're a YouTube channel. So uh, that's, that's all good. Since moving into this location in 2018, basically every dollar that wasn't spent on all the videos you've seen, so the stuff we've bought for reviews or the equipment for testing stuff, any dollar that wasn't spent on the stuff you've seen was getting saved. And that was to get the new space so that we could uh, really do things right and buy some equipment that I wanted for it. Just to give you a teaser, years and years ago, I said we wanted to start doing some fan testing. We had good ideas for it, but I just, I, I did do a lot of testing. I wasn't really happy with the level of detail we got and the accuracy, so we canned it and we found a machine we wanted. It is $44,000. And uh, I said, you know what? When, when we move and we can fit it, I don't care if I'm not gonna make money on that machine for five years. I think it would be fun to use. So we're gonna get that when we move. And I, I'm not gonna commit to when we'll be able to start producing data from it. It will take probably about six months to even get the machine here because it needs to be built and tuned, and then we'll have to be trained on it. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about adding, is this, the machine we're looking at is the very same one that companies like Corsair use to develop their fans. So we're gonna have data that is not only uh, about as deep, I think I, I'm gonna drop the modesty here. It will be the most detailed fan data you will possibly find in media. Uh, but not only that, it's also legally defensible data and we can start testing against the numbers that are printed on a box. And that should be scary for a lot of fan manufacturers. So that's kind of where we're going with this. I want the companies in the industry to know that we're insane and we'll spend every dollar uh, to validate their claims. And hopefully that leads to good products, like we've seen with the case revolution over the last couple of years as the focus has shifted to higher quality. But that's just one of the things I want to do. There's a lot of other stuff we want to add as well. The fan tester is one that I, I know we can produce good value with it because we can do more than just fan reviews. We can also do uh, added data for our case testing. We can look at the case fan quality from one vendor to the next. We can add a lot of quality to our cooler testing. The machine is capable of producing static pressure information, PQ curves, everything and we have a lot more plans too for the space. So enough of the preamble, we're gonna do a bit of a walk through the space. I did this walk through many months ago. Uh, oh, I should note this too. So we've missed more publishing days than ever in the past six months or so, and it's really bothered me. We used to do every single day for most of 2020, and we skipped a good amount of them the last six months. We've recovered it in the last month while still keeping the quality, but it took a long time. Since about November, I've been working on setting up this space. So I've done all the, the design work. Andrew has done a phenomenal job of replicating the space in Unreal Engine, and we've mapped it all out. We've done everything from uh, working on the layout of the rooms, the floor choice based on the noise floor, not the literal floor in that case, that we wanted. Um, it, it's taken months to get everything planned. And so secretly behind the scenes, uh, we've been working on this for already like six months and 
we're not going to move for a while yet. I'm not going to say exactly when for a number of reasons, but um, let's go with sometime this year. That's what's been going on. We found an opening, and I, I felt a lot less scared to jump on it this time than I did moving into this space because now it's like I'm ready. I know what this process is. I'm excited about the tools we're adding, the content capabilities, the fact that I'll be able to record a video in a separate studio that doesn't have foot traffic from the rest of the team moving between rooms, small stuff like that, that'll really improve just our efficiency and uh, keep everyone happy on the team too. I'm adding some, uh, a nice break room and stuff like that. So uh, we're not going full crazy Silicon Valley company, but trying to make it nice for everybody to make a good workplace. Okay, let's do a little bit of the walkthrough. Welcome to the new GN lab. Okay, so we'll start here, but this place is, we're, we're currently renovating it. It's gonna be a huge amount of work. Not sure when we're gonna run these videos, when we're gonna run this particular video, but uh, right now, today, we're looking at several months, probably about almost half a year of work. So four to six months to get it done. And you can see why in rooms like this, where we've gone through and already done a lot of demolition and uh, we're gonna have to do a lot of repair and fixing and things like that. But this particular room is really interesting because this one is going to be an, a semi-anechoic chamber. So we're actually working with someone from the industry. Those of you who have been paying attention to PC hardware a long time will be more familiar with the person with him than those of you who are new. We won't talk about who it is until later, but we're working with a sound engineer basically and designing an, a semi-anechoic chamber or, uh, or some other similar chamber. The idea is we'll be able to do really accurate noise testing from this room. So this room's large enough to accommodate it. We're gonna build a room within a room in here and that'll be our noise testing chamber, which will give us a noise floor much lower than where we are now. So that'll be a really cool improvement. Uh, and this is probably just, I don't know, this, this room just gives you a good feel for the state it's in today and how much work we're gonna have to do. But it will allow us to customize to an extent that we can build out a, a true PC hardware testing lab. And as I've probably already stated in the intro of this video, that's possible because of things like Patreon and the store for several years now, just saving up all that money so we can build up a proper lab. We'll check out a room for thermal testing and hopefully fan testing for real. It's a long story, uh, but we'll check those out too. So yeah, this room, we'll have a room within a room. We'll probably have some kind of small storage closet somewhere, or maybe I'll just put in basically a pantry or a bookshelf, but that'll be for things like storing fans because they'll be tested in here for noise. Cases will get tested in here for noise and it'll allow us to really heavily standardize what we do and just further isolate for variables. So that's the plan for this room. This one is probably going to be the single most expensive upfit out of all of it because all that stuff takes expensive materials to isolate noise. So unfortunately, the chamber, the noise chamber, we're probably looking at finishing next year as opposed to doing it as part of the renovation for the rest of the building, because I'm gonna need to save more money to build that out and plan a lot more, but this is where it'll go eventually. Is this door unlocked? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes. So this room is going to be for sort of heavier machines for testing. This wall is getting taken out. We're going to combine another room that's about the size of this one on the other side of the wall. The previous occupant, the previous tenant of this building had this constructed. We're not quite sure why or what their purpose was, but it's in our way. And uh, fortunately, it's, it's not too bad to get rid of this because it's obviously not load bearing. Contractors marked it for removal, so that'll be gone soon. We're going to put in machines for, uh, so there's going to be a thermal chamber. It's one of my top priorities for controlling the temperature as we do tests, we won't have to worry as much about AC. And that'll save us a lot of time and over time, a lot of money in time, because uh, right now we spend a huge amount of time doing tests and retests because we're trying to control the local temperature. But if we have a chamber, that'll be much easier. And then also really want to add a fan tester. So there's an automated fan tester that you can buy that is ex extremely, extremely expensive, but uh, and I don't think we'll get ROI basically for, I don't know, for years. It's not a good investment financially, but I really want to work with it and I think it would be fun, so I don't care. 
so we'll take a bit of a hit there financially just to do something cool and do fan testing. That'll go in this room. And um, over time, we'll accumulate some other equipment. So like I was interested in a salt spray tester. Those aren't too bad if you buy them used. And uh, we'll put something like that in this room and then that'll allow us to do some additional testing on like water blocks and water cooling components, uh, cold plates, anything that's metal that might corrode, a salt spray tester will allow us to really rapidly and in a controlled way test it to see at what point it corrodes in the process. So all of that goes in here once we remove this wall. This room is gonna get a lot of use. This will be our testing room. It is currently probably, I don't know, probably like maybe 30% of our current office in terms of size. So our current testing room could fit from where you are, where Andrew is standing. Probably this is where the wall would be. Uh, so much smaller space. This is where it ends in the current one. And that line would be drawn about here. And that would be the entire current testing room. So then expand it by more than double. Uh, we're probably looking at a three times increase in size. So what that'll allow us to do is keep a lot more active benches deployed. So we won't have to tear apart test benches with different CPU architectures all the time. We can keep more ready so we can respond faster when there's things to test. And we can also set up additional test benches to test other types of components. So water cooling, for example, actually there's a sink right over here that we're planning to leave in place as I avoid nails on the ground. This uh, just happened to be here from previous tenants, but we're gonna leave it. I might put in a wider sink. And the plan is in this room, we'll add some water cooling testing. So we'll have enough table space to finally have a permanent wet bench, which will allow us to do CPU block or GPU block test. We could even have two of them, one for each. And the uh, problem right now, we can't really test that stuff without it really getting in the way and slowing down the process for everything else we test. And that's just because the table space required. And uh, really looking forward to adding the additional cooler testing benches in here because we'll finally have the space. It's a much bigger space, so it won't be as prone to heat change as we ramp up workloads. And um, also there's just a lot more powerful AC here. But that's the plan for this room. And then we also have a production room we'll check out too. This room is gonna be the production room. So this one is actually adjacent to the testing room. And this means we'll be actually closer to the, the work we're getting done, be closer to each other. So it'll be easier to run back and forth and do tests and then come back and do production. When I say production, currently we have a, a testing room we call it. We have what we call a production room. We have just a really small break kitchen area, and then it's basically a fridge and a pantry and a table. And then we have the studio. And so the production room is the one where the editors will sit down and edit videos, the writers will write videos and write data, but the data is collected in a testing room, and then it's edited and worked into content here. It should be able to get it so that everybody can have two desks now, like two tables now, have a lot more table space to keep active projects going without everything getting cluttered all the time. It's a big problem we run into right now. The plan for this room is we're gonna remove this cabinetry. You can see that we've actually already removed the wall. So there was a, a wall here previously and we've gotten rid of some of that. It's gonna be a ton of work in this room, but um, I, I don't think we're even, if everyone has two tables, we're not gonna fill it immediately. So it gives us some room to expand in the future as well. This room I'm pretty excited about too. So this is gonna be a break room. It's huge, but part of what it's going to be other than, well, first of all, it'll look, become a lot smaller as we add in the millwork. So the cabinetry, pantry, fridge, all that stuff will, will shrink the room inwards a bit. But uh, the future looking stuff I want to do with it is build a really, just like a different set. So we tried to do this with our original kitchen. Right when we moved in, we tried to set up a nice table where we could do sit down interviews with people. And we never did it that way. We always filmed at the A-roll set in the studio. But I'm thinking like, just because of the, the way we're gonna theme this room as a nice break room with vinyl, we're gonna do LBT flooring. So it's not real wood, not anywhere close. A lot of you are probably familiar with LBT uh, as being sort of a, a cheaper fake solution that still looks good and is easy to replace if it gets damaged. So we're gonna do a lot of that here and it'll sort of brighten the room and give it a nice look for interviews if and when travel picks up again, uh, when at this point, when it picks up again, um, we'll be able to sit down with people and have a different 
sort of set with different lighting and uh, it'll be more casual, almost like, almost like a coffee shop set as opposed to standing behind it. It's a little bit awkward to stand, stand behind a table with someone for like half an hour where you're both at about a 15 degree angle towards each other. It just feels kind of weird, it looks kind of weird. So we'll be able to set it up better in here. But the main purpose is a, um, a break room for people to take their lunch or whatever. Uh, we're gonna take out the walls down there and, exp and um, punch a hole through it basically and just kind of open it up a little bit and change some of these other walls around. But otherwise it's a fairly straightforward room. So basically this was a former manufacturing facility, which is why we have so much cleanup to do. But there's a couple things in general for renovation that uh, you'll see like random power poles coming down where we've already got a, our contractor started on cleaning this up, removing bits and pieces of it we don't want. We might try and salvage some things. This could potentially be an asset for uh, running power to the middle of the room if we need it. That's a liability, but that'll be fixed. <laughs> and um, the, this particular room, I think we're gonna keep it closed. So we're gonna have to fix this huge mess up here. The drop ceiling uh, is caved in in this area. So that needs to be fixed. The floor obviously needs to be completely replaced. It's like three different types of floor. You know, there's concrete under here. Uh, so this will all have to be redone, but um, it'll be a fun project. I'm not personally gonna be doing it, <laughs> but it's been fun to map it out. And, uh, and see where it goes. This though, I, I don't know, like, I've been trying to think of what's cool stuff I can do with things that are already here and how can we repurpose a previous occupant's items uh, to do something unique in our own space. So this, I don't know. I don't know that there's anything here. You could, you could build drywall around it or put power poles in or whatever, but there's some other stuff that might be interesting. Uh, server, for example, might be potentially well suited to this area if we get in a, uh, a two-leg server rack or something, but we'll probably put that in another room. So lots of work that can be done renovation-wise, and uh, it'll be completely our space when we're done. So that'll be the big bonus is that we'll have a space that we can tune to exactly how we want so that we can do the most efficient testing and expand the testing the most. So this, stop, stop, don't show them the mess. <laughs> this is, uh, well, not much better, I guess. But uh, I think the previous tenant was using this as a kitchen or something. Uh, not really exactly sure, but that's what it looks like to me. So this also has a caving in drop. We're gonna clean all this up and uh, make it we're gonna keep the drops in. This room is gonna be the studio, I should say that. So this will be our film studio. It's a pretty long shot this way, and we have some unique ideas to set up the video sets in ways that we've never been able to set up before. So hopefully we can finally have more than one active set so that we can do B-roll, like foot product footage, and uh, A-roll without having to shuffle all the lights around every time. But anyway, that's some of the plans. You can see our post-apocalypse zombie red X's on things that need to be removed. And uh, I don't know what's going on here, but that, that'll, it's former, former wall, I think. We'll have to clean that up. And this will probably be part of the, I don't know, either B-roll set or A-roll, we'll figure it out. But this is basically going to be a film room. We've got an electrical panel here that'll be useful for <laughs> our overclocking stuff. And this will be cleaned up. This was hooked up to some of the uh, equipment that they were using. It's hooked up to water lines previously, so uh, it was like chillers or something. But uh, yeah, this we're gonna do our liquid nitrogen overclocking in here. We'll do our product reviews in here and the B-roll in here. So it's basically our current studio. It's, it's only actually a little bit bigger. The current studio is the largest single contiguous part of the space. And um, I think this one's probably about maybe two to two and a half times the size. Definitely bigger, but not as crazy of an upgrade as some of the other rooms. Hmm. So a couple other quick things, I guess. This will probably be a server room. This is just a bathroom we're gonna, we have to upfit as well. And uh, this, so Andrew is getting an upgrade. Andrew will now have a personal corner office. You can see it's at the corner of two walls and uh, Andrew will do all of his video editing here, so. What? Is that 
a problem or I think there's a lot of space. Do you see this? Watch. How's the audio quality in here? I don't see a problem. That is a pretty good what? <laughs> you don't like your corner office? <laughs> Everybody says they want a corner office. That's the number one desired commodity in an office building. I don't feel like you're very grateful for this. <laughs> Andrew is completely ungrateful. Uh, he's jealous because this is Keegan's office across from Andrew's office. This room, we're still trying to figure out what exactly to use it for, but that's good. There needs to be some room to expand. That's the problem we ran into last time. We didn't have any room to expand. So we ran out of space way too fast. So hopefully that fixes the problem. They have a few rooms we don't know what to do with. Uh, it does come with a sink. There's still some water in it. Uh, and it's got some rusty nails in it. So that's probably going to be the centerpiece of the room. I'm not really sure where to go from there. So that was the walkthrough. As you can see, there's a huge amount of work to be done. It's been getting worked on since we shot that video. And we're still working on it. So uh, it'll be a while, but really excited about the possibilities and what we can add. And a huge thank you to everybody in the community for supporting us and what we do. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's stuff that we could do better, and there's videos we published that I'm unhappy about because I think we didn't do a good enough job. But we constantly work to, to, to take those thoughts and put them into the next one. And let's just make the next one better. Let's get the next one to where we want it to be. And that's always the process, the, the bar. The goalposts always move, which is good and bad. Uh, I like it though. It's 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 tiring, but I like what what else? Why else am I doing this, right? So that's what we like doing. Uh, we're gonna keep moving those goalposts, keep improving, and um, looking forward to the new space. But in the meantime, you're gonna see me here just like always. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. See where it goes, and we'll see you all next time. The audio might make that kind of. The echo. Yeah. Also, I can't see your hands from here. Oh. But. Whatever. <laughs>